بسم الله الرحمن الله وعلى النبي الأمي برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين We were reciting verses from At-Tawbah, Surah At-Tawbah and this is one of the last chapters in the Quran Kareem This is that chapter that details the ghazwa of Tabuk like we have the chapter before Tawbah is Anfal so Surah Anfal details Rasulullah Wasallam's expedition called Al-Badr and Tawbah details the last expedition of our beloved It was a time where Rasulullah Wasallam said to everyone, everyone has to participate. It was a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everyone had to go. This being one of the last chapters to be revealed. That's why it is so rife and so fresh because this chapter exposes all hypocritical qualities. Muqashqisha, Mubathira, Fadiha. One has to study this chapter, first of all, with our own Islah intended. Because there's so many weaknesses in us that is exposed in this chapter. For example, one of the weaknesses, Allah speaks about one way, trait of the hypocrites. They prepare to comment about everybody. That person was in Tabuk. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asking everyone to contribute, everyone to give. Now the famous incident we always hear, Hazrat Abu Bakr gave everything. We all heard that incident, isn't it? He brought everything and put it forth. Then Hazrat Umar brought half of everything. Hazrat Uthman brought much. Allah's beloved got so happy. He placed it on his lap, made dua on it and gave duas to Hazrat Uthman. Ma darra Uthman, ma amila ba'da hadha. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Hazrat Abdurrahman bin Auf, radiyallahu anhu. There was a Sahabi who was, actually, he had, he was, he was, uh, he, he had an ailment. He was crippled somewhat. But he made an effort and he brought a little bit. And even that little bit was appreciated. It was put on top of the heap. There were those who wanted to go, but they had nothing to give in Allah's way to help the transport to go in Allah Ta'ala's way. Allah mentions the sincere believers. They wanted to go, but they couldn't go. Hazrat Abu Musa Ash'ari's Jamaat. Tawallaw wa a'yunuhum tafidhu min ad-dam'i hazanan Allah yajidu ma yunfiqoon. They turned back where Allah's Nabi said, Wallahi la ajidu ma ahmilukum alayh. By Allah, by Allah, I got nothing to give you to go. They were sincere. They went back, but they were crying because they wanted to go in the path of Allah. Later when Allah opened the way, Hazrat Abu Musa Ash'ari was so sincere Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called him. Ya Allah, Allah made the arrangements, but he's worried now. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Wallahi. So that whole mas'ala comes in. When you say, Wallahi, Wallahi la ajidu ma ahmilukum alayhi. And the whole meaning of the qasam and so forth, and how serious is a qasam. But look at the consciousness of Allah, of Hazrat Abdullah bin Qais, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, radiyallahu anhu. That event also happened. But whenever a sahabi is bringing much, the hypocrites, they're commenting, oh, this man is just a show-off. He's bringing so much, what he thinks, only he can give. Just they just prepared to talk, just want to talk and comment. Then, that sahabi who brings little but that's all he could find, that's all he had. The hypocrites would comment, they're just sitting and watching, and they only got a lot to say. Oh, he gives so little, what he thinks, Allah needs his little. Whoever does anything, the hypocrites just got something to comment. Allah save us from such a despicable attitude. This chapter teaches us, Chup karo, keep quiet, control this tongue, don't speak, say something good, but don't judge another person's intention. Who are you and I to know what's going on in that person's heart? Karke jika, we want to do, do something. Don't just sit on our armchair and relax and watch everybody and we know everybody's commentary. What this one is doing, what's that person's intention, such a... Allah Ta'ala guide us and Allah Ta'ala save us. This is an advice for ourselves. Now, among the ayat we read, there was a youngster in the masjid. His name was Umair bin Sa'ad. Now he's in the environment of the masjid. The environment of the masjid has such an impact. He wants to give, but he's a young boy. He has nothing to give. He's wondering why my stepfather is not here. 
So he goes home. He says, Father, Father, you know what's going on in Masjid? Now his stepfather was missing the salawat. So which shows he was joining the hypocrites. Allah Ta'ala, save us. When we miss our salawat, we can lose our iman. Because we join wrong company. And that's, those bad traits can rub off onto us. That's why we heard, Al-Munafiqoon wal-Munafiqat. The hypocrites, male and female, are from each other. One another. Ba'duhum min ba'd. They only advocate evil. Ah, you mustn't join this. Oh, this one is like that. Oh, that one is like that. Ya'muruna bil munkar. Good taking place. People are trying to do good. Wayanhona anil ma'roof. They try and stop it. Everyone is giving in Allah's way. They quick to comment. But their hands are tied behind the backs. Wayaqbiduna aidiyahum. They're not prepared to give anything. So Allah speaks about all the munafiqeen's ways and traits here. Then Allah says, Wal mu'minun. They help each other. They support each other. They encourage each other. They see good in each other. They enjoy good. They encourage it. They do good. They help others do good. They remember Allah. They encourage others to remember Allah. They come for salah. They bring others for salah. They stay away from sin. They help others and encourage others and motivate others to stay away from sin. They understand that that youngster who came to the masjid for the first time, if I'm going to reprimand him, that why you dress like this? Why this? Why that? That youngster, that's the last time he'll come. He'll find somewhere else where he's shown love. So a mu'min understands, we can't lose this young man. Take him with us in the jamaat for a few days. Then we'll tell him. Then he's happy to accept his mistake and his wrong. There's a way. Not just to make, not just to, there's a way to bring that change. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ra'a minkum munkaran, fal yughayirhu biyadi. He who sees a munkar, a wrong, should change it with his hand. Now obviously, a person of seniority, that means different. A sultan, it has a different meaning. For the prince principal, it has a different meaning. For the father, it has a different meaning. Father can change it with the hand in a different way. You and I, with the general masses, changing it with the hand could also mean, make his ikram, take him for chai. My brother, he's from Ethiopia. Take him for coffee. He's from Somali. Take him for some nice rice dish. He's a youngster. Take him for milkshake, ice cream. Then encourage him. Then take him out in the path of Allah. Then bring him to the masjid. So there's a way. Now you made an effort. It doesn't directly mean that, but there is some intent of that. Change it with the hand. You just see any random person doing something wrong. Give him one smack. He'll never listen to you. Try it. He'll never listen. That's the last time. Next time he'll see you coming, he's turning the other way. So what, what it means also we have to understand. If we can't change it with the hand, then converse with him verbally. Talk to him at least. But what does it mean? If you can't change it with your hand, not just say with your tongue. The hadith says, it's atf. So change it with your tongue. So say with your tongue what will bring change. That young man, mashallah, you're trying so hard. You're doing so well. You read so well. So many good things about you. But in private tell him. Just one thing. If you bring this also alive, or you add this into your beautiful qualities, how much more amazing would it be? So you spoke to him politely. You appreciated the good in him. And you also highlighted his wrong, but privately, not in public, just correct him. That's not bringing a change. Publicly correcting the people? No. Lovingly, politely, privately. See what Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi says about the same thing. Correcting in privacy. Calling him one side. And then the hadith says, if you can't change it with your tongue, then, فَبِقَلْبِ We generally translate it as, feel bad in the heart. But if you look at the context of the hadith, it also means, فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِقَلْبِ So change it. With your heart. How are we going to change it with the heart? We see Allah's order being broken. Cry to Allah. Allah, I can't change it. Ya Allah, you change it. That young man has such good qualities. He just doesn't want to come. Ya Allah, you bring him. Bring him to the masjid. Bring him out in Allah's way. Ya Allah, they're worshipping the sun. What can I do? My heart is paining. They're not worshipping you. Which creation of Allah was crying to Sulaiman alayhi salam? When Sulaiman alayhi salam was angry with that, with that creation. And the creation came after that and said, Oh Allah's Nabi, 
يسجدون للشمس من دون الله I couldn't bear it they worshiping the sun and not worshiping my Allah which creation of Allah was that that was a bird brother if the bird is painting when people are making puja and worshiping sun and idol and you and I walk past and we don't even paint is that right is it right not to paint and make dua Ya Allah, they're worshipping Christ. They're worshipping a statue. Ya Allah, give them hidayat. We can change it with the heart through dua. The hadith is saying, فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ بِقَلْبِهِ So change it with the heart. Through dua. Make dua for that person. So this youngster goes home. He says to his stepfather, Oh, father, what happened to you? Why you wasn't there? Abu Bakr, Hazrat Abu Bakr gave, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Uthman, Hazrat Ali, Hazrat Talha, Hazrat Abdurrahman, Hazrat Uthman, even that Sahabi crippled, he gave. Where was you? Where were you? He caught the old man at the wrong time. So he blurted something that put his Iman in jeopardy. That's why we have to be careful before we speak and ask Allah to guide us before we utter. He said, I, all that is not true. We worse than donkeys if what he's saying is true. Now the Billah. What he uttered was very, very deadly towards his iman. One can utter such a thing, he can lose iman. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, A man says one kalima to make Allah happy. He stands up for truth. He stands up for, for justice. He speaks for Allah's deen. He speaks out for Allah. That one kalima, Allah guarantees him jannat forever and ever. Allah's pleasure forever and ever. But a man utters one kalima, where he displeases Allah. He falls in the pit of hell for over 70 years. What happens to this boy? Radiallahu anhu. He said this and the old man blurted something that put him into jeopardy. This youngster was in a predicament. What do I do? What do I do? I have to be loyal to my stepfather. But my loyalty to Allah is first. What can I do? He was parashad. He was restless. He goes to his stepfather. He says, I must tell you, what you did is wrong. You can't do this. He says, please, you don't know. Get away. So he didn't know what to do. He had to go to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah's Nabi, this is what happened. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also a very important lesson. Never judge a situation by hearing one side of the story. It will always be wrong. That's one side. We have to hear the other side also. The coin has two sides. That is imperative. Necessary. Oh, you're just hearing... Your child's side of the story. Now you're getting angry. You want to take arms. Break that other child's leg. Who knows? Maybe your child started it, brother. Yeah, that child's side of the story also. It doesn't mean he's not your child. He's an ummati of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also. He's somebody's child. Maybe your child made a mistake. Don't jump to take your sticks. and No, we can't do that. Hear both sides of the story and be fair. Allah says that in the Quran, be fair even if it's against yourself and your parents and your children. Let's just finish the incident quickly. Now this child was in a predicament. Oh Allah's Nabi, what must I do? Nabi Wasallam always heard both sides. He sent someone called Julas. Julas comes there. Julas, did you utter and make such remarks? He said, what? Such as remarks, never. I, t I said, no such thing. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, okay. In that, this youngster is sitting there. Julas is sitting there. And now obviously the gathering is emotional. This child was teary. He's feeling bad. Hazrat Umair, oh Allah, I never lied. I don't want my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to feel bad about me. That I, you know, disappointed him. And I'm lying like that. Oh Allah. I never lied. Oh Allah, help me. The verses we heard in the Salah was revealed. This chapter, verses 73 onward. Allah says, Now Rasulullah was taken and seized by the condition of wahi, which we know. Allah says, Yahlifuna billah ma qalu. Some of them utter in Allah's name that they made no such remarks. Ma qalu, that we didn't say. Walaqad qalu kalimat al kufr. But they did utter statements of kufr and that took them into kufr after iman. Wa kafaru ba'da islamihim. 
and they think they can harm Allah's deen. They can think they think they can harm Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah and His Rasul don't need us. We need deen. The end of the ayat says, "Fa'iyatubu." If they make toba, is better for them. Otherwise, Allah's punishment and saza is severe indeed. Allah help us. But we can't finish this incident until we mention the last part. The good part is this: that Julas regretted. He made nadamat. He said, "Oh Allah's Nabi, I was wrong." The ayat gives me chance of toba. I make toba, and he went to Umair. He says, "Young man, lucky you were the means of my toba." Sometimes a person in front of the elder will say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." When he goes behind, he shows a fist to that youngster who puts him in in trouble. You know, that's that youngster who complained that that other fellow is taking drugs and all that. Now he got into trouble behind the wall. He's showing him like this. No, that's insincerity. Look at Hazrat Julas. Now we call him Hazrat Julas, radiyallahu anhu. Because he made toba right in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, so you can't narrate the first part of the incident, which is full of lessons, without completing it that he did make toba, and Allah accepts toba because give people hope. And I'll finish with this: like to drink alcohol is haram, totally. Drugs is haram. Adultery is haram. Also, to lose hope in the mercy of Allah is also haram. So have hope in Allah's mercy. Allah loves you and all of us billions of times more than our mothers love us. Allah says, "Oh my banda, I love you. Isn't it my right that you should love me too?" As a Dawood alayhi salam, Allah tells him, "Tell the people about me. Make them love me. I will love you more." Allah says to His beloved, "So make the people love Allah. Tell people about the beauty of Allah. Tell Muslim and non-Muslim who will do this in Shaya. Very few, but all of us." Jazakum. All try. Make everyone love our Allah Taala. Make everyone love our Habibullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In our small way, try, try. Kuch kena. Tell him something. Where you start, you come ask Mufti Sab. Come ask Morana Sab. Morana Abdullah Sab also told us last time he's ready to help anybody. Morana Abdullah Patel Sab. He says anybody. You know this dawa has to take place. Ask him. Guide, guide us. You spoke to somebody. You told him a little. You'll find very few objections they'll make. Most of them will tell you, "Hey, thank you. I never knew. I appreciate it." Very few will ask a question, and from those who ask questions, most of them ask a simple question. Very few, a small percentage, will ask a complicated question. And when they ask you, that small percentage through which Shaitan puts was was a oh, they're gonna ask question. So we leave the whole dawa for such a small percentage. If he asks you something complicated, you have the answer. What you gonna tell him? La adri.